Hello everyone, I'm back with another format for the GD Quest channel. So these videos are bonus videos that come on top of the regular weekly tutorial and they are dedicated to uh, answering your questions, technical questions on game art, etc. Uh, anything I can actually answer and um, complementing the actual video tutorials. They are simpler, they are made live, they are demos uh, contrary to the, the kinds of videos I make with lots of edits and cuts every week. So I wanted to add some notes on the video tutorial about uh, the button creating techniques. At the end I said that um, the double shadow technique, the way it's done in here, was not the cleanest way to do it. It's not very elegant. Why is that? Simply because, you see, here I'm stacking two effects, a contact shadow and a cast shadow. If I change the size or the opacity or the, the spread, normally it should change some things. The, the size changes, changes stuff, the distance as well. You can see that it affects the other cast shadow. And that's a big problem. That's a big, big problem. Because we want to be able to fully control both effects separately. So how do we do that? Well, there's something I haven't talked about in the video, which is that uh, whenever you have an effect on a given layer, so let's make a test effect. I'm going to add a drop shadow. Okay, like that. Well, here you can see if, I'm, if I color the actual layer, I have a red layer. I can change its opacity and it's going to change the, op the opacity of the whole layer, including its effect. But I can also change that slider which is called the fill. And if you ever wondered why, uh, what this is, basically it is just what you see. It's the actual pixels you have drawn in the texture and it's not affecting the effect. So it's the opacity of your drawing. Okay, so if we set the fill to zero, what do we have? Only the effects. Okay. So, what we can do then is we have our button here. We can simply convert it to a smart object. So I'm going to right click, convert to smart object, and it's going to be this single button. And uh, a smart object is basically an instantiated uh, an, an item that you can instantiate in Photoshop. So what you can do is basically I'm going to duplicate it two times, okay, and I'm going to call one instance contact shadow and the other instance cast shadow. For both of them, I'm going to select them and set the fill to zero. And you can see if I uh, hide the lower the lower uh, layer we can't see the two others, simply because the fill is to zero, set to zero. I'm going to move the effects of the contact shadow on one of the layers, and remove uh, the inner shadow is going on the, this group down below, and I'm going to move the effect of the second, uh, the cast shadow on the cast shadow layer. And you can see that it's creating, we have isolated our shadows, all right? And now, if I change one of the two effects, you can see that it's, it's not affected. You know, one doesn't affect the other. You can see that with my contact shadow, which I, I can change. And I'm going to uh, add my base layer button back. And what I'm going to do is to change, basically, that contact shadow. I think it's, it's a bit soft. All right, I'm moving it around. I can change its opacity, okay, make it darker, more saturated, and you can see that, wow, it's working, <laughs> quite simply. I can also extend the cast shadow, basically, that way. There is one effect which I didn't cover in the uh, tutorial, which is quite useful, I use it often. So I've used the inner shadow in the tutorial to kind of, you know, give a, a little bit of contact shadow to the inside of the object, and it works really well. Well, there is another effect that is quite interesting, which is bevel and emboss. Hold on, I have to deactivate it that way, which I use quite often. What bevel and emboss does is it basically lets our object um, 
according to some parameters, so a light direction and a shadow height, which you can see I can change the altitude of the light basically around our object. I'm going to add the shadows again so we can see a bit better what's happening. And it, it works as such. Basically, at the top or on the light side normally, so here it's inverted because the bevel is happening down, but if it's going up, basically on the light side, which you can see in that little circle, you will have uh, the highlight effect, which you can set up down there. And on the shadow side, on the opposite side of the light, you will have the shadow effect, which you can set up down there. So you will find in all effects, in all areas of Photoshop, basically you will find the same blending modes which, if you know how to use the blending modes, well, basically, you know a lot about effects and the possibilities they offer already. You know, it's it's pretty straightforward. Uh, every effect resembles a little bit uh, another. So, what we can do, Linear Dodge is pretty cool for highlights as well as overlay, which also adds a bit of contrast. It's often softer, uh, but I'm going to use Linear Dodge in that case, which uh, not only brightens the color, but saturates it a little bit. And I'm going to use the overlay mode for the shadows, which is going to add contrast in that area. So if I zoom in, boom, you can see the, the result of the effect, which is pretty cool. Quite useful for buttons and all that, su all that stuff. Not very interesting for that one in particular, but as you can soften the effect, you can kind of create, uh, add some roundness and some lighting, nice lighting, to the object, as you can see right there. That's it for this first bonus video. Um, if you have suggestions for future demos, go on, because they are for you. Actually, the whole channel is for you, right? So I'm really eager to hear what you have to say about it, uh, if you liked it, if you have any suggestions on how to improve it, feel free to tell me in the comments below. That said, I wish you a great day. Be creative and until next time.